Hi, my name is Jeff Bennett. I'm an astronomer and an author, and I'm here to talk to you about the scale of the universe for International Dark Sky Week. You can find me on Twitter or Medium at that handle right there. There are some of my websites if you want to check them out later. But for now, I want to get right into our topic for the day. I took this beautiful photo from the Dark Sky website. There's the uh, link for it there. And as you know, we're seeing in this photo our Milky Way as it appears to us here on Earth. And so part of my goal for today is to try to help you understand exactly what it is we're seeing when we look at something like this. Now, I think most of you are well aware that we live on a planet called Earth that is part of our solar system that is part of our Milky Way galaxy, which is part of the universe. The Milky Way that we see in the photo here is, of course, what we see from our location here in the Milky Way galaxy, looking out around us, and that's why it appears to take the shape of a circle going all the way around the sky. To understand the scale of the objects that we're seeing in that picture, I want to start with the scale of our solar system. And to do that, I want to use this device called the Voyage Scale Model Solar System, which is a scale model that we have in Washington, DC. Uh, you can see here is the National Air and Space Museum, the National Mall over here. And what we've done to make this scale model of the solar system is we've taken the real solar system and shrunk it down to one ten billionth of actual size. In other words, the sizes and distances in the real solar system are 10 billion times what you see here on the screen. And you'll see here that is the sun at one ten billionth of actual size. And so you might be thinking, if that's the sun, how big would Earth be in comparison? And I'm going to stop sharing the screen here for a moment because I have here a uh, ball that is about the right size for the sun in this model. So maybe you've been thinking about how big is the Earth in comparison, and you probably realize that the Earth is smaller than the sun, but most people are pretty surprised at how small the Earth actually is. And in fact, with a little piece of tape here, I've put a ball bearing on here that is the size of Earth in comparison to the sun. I'll see if I can move that up here close to the camera so you can see that little ball bearing right there. That's how big Earth is compared to the sun. I'm going to put the screen back up here. So now you should be able to see the slide again, and there is that sun again. So that little tiny Earth is located in the disk right there for Earth, right? Mercury, Venus, Earth. And you might also be wondering, well, where is the moon on that, this scale? The moon, of course, is smaller than the Earth. And on this scale, the distance between the Earth and the moon is only about four centimeters, about like that, which is kind of amazing to realize that on this scale, where we've got the sun here, and then 15 meters to the Earth, the distance from the Earth to the Moon is only about that much, and that means it is the farthest that a human being has ever traveled. Of course, we've sent a robotic spacecraft much further than that in the solar system, but no human being has ever traveled farther than that, and the only time people ever did that was back in the Apollo missions when we sent people to the Moon some 50 years ago. Now, continuing back to our scale, we've got the sun 15 meters to the Earth, Mercury and Venus in between. We can continue out to Mars. And of course, we could keep walking to the other planets, which you can't see in the photo here. However, I've got this map here on the screen that now shows you where the rest of the planets are located in this Voyage scale model solar system. So there you see the inner planets that we see in the photo out to Mars, and you see it's much farther to get to Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and out to Pluto, which is about 600 meters away from the Sun on this scale. So you can walk, in fact, uh, this is the uh, 
the Smithsonian Castle building right here, so that's where Pluto's located. You can walk from this end of the Air and Space Museum where the sun is to Pluto in about five or 10 minutes, depending on your pace and whether you stop to look at all the information about the planets that we have here in this model along the way. But it just takes you a few minutes to walk to Pluto. The next question you might wonder is, where on this scale is the next star? You may know that the nearest star system to our own is the Alpha Centauri system. Its largest of its three stars is about the same size as our sun. So how much farther would you have to walk until you reached Alpha Centauri on this scale? I'll let you think about for that for just a moment. And now I will show you that in fact, to reach Alpha Centauri on this scale, you would have to cross the United States. In other words, on the same scale where you can walk from the sun to Pluto in just a few minutes, on the same scale where the distance from the Earth to the moon, the farthest the human being has ever traveled is only that far, you would have to cross the United States to reach the next star. That is kind of an amazing fact, and it also makes you realize that we could not keep using this voyage scale to show any more of our galaxy because after we go past the next couple of nearest stars, they wouldn't fit on the Earth anymore. And therefore, if we want to start thinking about the scale of the Milky Way galaxy, we're going to have to shift to a different viewpoint, shift to another scale. Now, one way we could do this is to shrink the whole scale down by another factor of a billion. And if we do that, we would find that the Milky Way galaxy would actually fit on a football field. We are located about there, around the 20 yard line. But now with this scale, because we've shrunk it down by another factor of a million, the distance from our solar system to Alpha Centauri is now only four centimeters, four millimeters, excuse me. Uh, so we could do a lot with this scale, but I prefer to think about it in another way. And so the alternative way I'm gonna have you think about the size of the Milky Way galaxy is to think about the number of stars that are in it. And as you can see, it says here on the screen, there are roughly 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, actually a few hundred billion, but 100 billion is a good number to think about. Uh, because we know now that almost all stars have planets, you could also think of that as being 100 billion solar systems in the Milky Way galaxy, or even that there's probably something close to 100 billion Earth-sized planets in the Milky Way galaxy. So to understand what we mean when we say 100 billion stars or solar systems or planets, I want you to imagine that you know, maybe later tonight you're thinking about all this stuff that you learned in this session today and you're having a hard time going to sleep. So you decide to count stars instead of sheep to help you fall asleep. So you start counting them, one, two, three, and so on. How long would it take you to count 100 billion stars? Now, of course, it depends on how fast you count, but obviously, if you counted one per second, one, two, three, it would take you 100 billion seconds to count the 100 billion stars. Incidentally, if you do this with kids, it's pretty fun. I have done this with elementary school kids many times. And when you start talking about this, one of the objections you'll commonly get from some of the kids is that they can actually count a lot faster than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on, which is fine. But you might point out to them, if you're ever doing this, that it gets tougher to keep counting at that rate when you get to, say, 38,492,467,191. Because are you even remembering what comes next? And can you say it in one second? Well, anyway, let's suppose you could do it. So it would take you about 100 billion seconds to count 100 billion stars. How long is that? Well, 100 billion seconds doesn't mean much to most of us. So you might divide it by 60 to convert it into minutes, and then divide it by 60 again to convert it to hours, divide by 24 to convert it to days, divide by 365 to convert it to years. And if you do all that, you will find that 100 billion seconds is more than 3,000 years. In other words, if you started counting tonight and you didn't take any breaks and you didn't fall asleep, and most importantly, you didn't die, you could count to 100 billion, count the 100 billion stars in about a little over 3,000 years. 
And that, of course, is just the stars in our own Milky Way galaxy. What if we wanted to think about the rest of the universe? There's also about 100 billion galaxies in the universe, which means that if you put together the idea of 100 billion stars in an average galaxy, 100 billion galaxies in the universe, you find that together there's something like 10 to the 22nd stars in the universe. And the only good way I've come up with to try to explain to you what that looks like is with this picture that shows a little boy on the beach and you can see the sand. So imagine going to this beach and trying to count those grains of sand that were in his shovel. And then imagine trying to count all the rest of the grains of sand on the beach here and over on the rest of the Waikiki Beach here in Hawaii and then continuing to other beaches around Hawaii and the rest of the world. Amazingly, what you would find is that the total number of grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth put together is just starting to be comparable to the 10 to the 22nd stars in the universe. In other words, there are as many stars in the universe as there are grains of sand on all the beaches on Earth put together. And I think that is where I'm gonna stop Today, of course, we could go on to talk about the scale of time and many, many other amazing things about the scale of the universe. But before I leave, I wanna share with you just a few other resources that I think you might find useful. First, if any of you are interested in getting a Voyage Scale Model solar system for your own community, they are now available to communities everywhere. The cost, depending on how many of these we build or what once will range somewhere from about $35,000 to $60,000. You can get more information about this at voyagesolarsystem.org. And if you're serious about wanting a voyage model sometime soon, please get in touch with me because we are getting ready to put out the first batch. And if we get a few more communities involved, we can lower the cost for everyone. Next, I want to tell you about this really cool program called Storytime from Space. It's especially good while kids are staying at home with the uh, closures due to the coronavirus. You can watch astronauts reading books from the International Space Station. The videos are posted at storytimefromspace.com. Uh, I love this program, and part of the reason that I'm involved is because they picked my books, my children's books, to be launched as part of the program. You can see one of them being read by a Japanese astronaut. Koichi Wakata uh, in the cupola of the space station. I've also created a couple years ago for the 2017 eclipse, I created a free app called Totality by Big Kids Science. You can see it's updated now for the upcoming eclipse in 2024 and other eclipses, solar eclipses in between. If you go to www.bigkidsscience.com slash eclipse, or just go directly into your app store for either Apple or iOS. You can download it, it is completely free. It's got lots of educational material that you can use with it and you can zoom right in and see exactly where you should go to see the upcoming total solar eclipse. I have been going around speaking on global warming. These are some of the places that I've been. I was planning to be all these places this spring, but of course the last couple of them have been canceled for now, but you can see a video of my talk or read my book, uh, globalwarmingprimer.com online. It's posted for free at the link here. And if anyone would like me to come speak next fall when things are back up and running, please get in touch with me. Uh, my latest project is a curriculum for middle school earth and space science. Incidentally, you'll see that the chapter one of this project posted at grade8science.com has lots of information about what we talked about today about the scale of the universe and much more. And finally, those are the books that I've written. I hope that you will check some of them out and I hope that we will uh, get a chance to talk further in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.